More than half of all rape suspects have at least one prior rape conviction, making it critical for law enforcement to move quickly in all these cases. Tonight, ABC 17 Sailor Petrus investigates how Missouri's lack of regulations are creating inconsistencies in how rape is handled and how some say it's creating a new set of victims. Right now, there's nothing in Missouri law that says how soon a sexual assault forensic exam should be tested, where it should be stored until then, and for how long. I spoke with a Missouri woman about her experience with a system that she says made a traumatic experience even harder to deal with. I woke up in the middle of the night and there were men standing over my bed uh, telling me to get on my stomach. This February marks two years since Taylor Hearth was raped inside her independence apartment. I have no idea how he broke in at the time. I you know, wanted to run and fight, but my daughter was right there. After what she says was an hours long ordeal, she had a friend call 911. She went to the hospital and had a rape kit completed. I was calling every day trying to get more information on where they were with the investigation and where my rape kit was. Taylor's rape kit was sent to one of the three Highway Patrol crime labs capable of testing it. Reports show it took one month for results. Roughly that sexual assault kit takes on average about 35 days uh, to complete. But there was no match in the law enforcement database. Taylor wouldn't learn who her assailant was until he struck again. In October of the same year, a Johnson County deputy was kidnapped and raped. One of the men's DNA in that rape kit finally matched to Taylor's. I you know, went and got a rape kid done partially because I didn't want them to be able to do it again. But she says she had no clue where it was in the testing process. To not know where it is or what stage in the process it is or if it's ever going to be tested is just is hell. There is inconsistent practices across the state because our statute is silent on this. Missouri's only law relates to reimbursing medical providers for performing a sexual assault forensic exam. We have nothing that provides guidance, so it's really up to a local community how they're doing it. Law enforcement agencies and hospitals all have different policies as to how long they'll hold on to a completed rape kit. Advocates and lawmakers tell me this can create issues. Missouri's um, lack of standards and uh, rules, regulations, laws um, around rape kits uh, exacerbates the problem of, of the backlog that exists. Not having standardized procedures can result in delays. It can result in bottlenecks in various places. And what we need to find out is where are the bottlenecks? Right now, the Missouri Attorney General's office is doing an audit of all untested rape kits in the state, something that's never been done before. This is something that frankly should have been done a long time ago. The Attorney General tells me his office is still in the process of collecting that data, so I found some myself. I sent sunshine requests to different police departments and hospitals across the state for the number of completed rape kits that haven't been sent to crime labs for testing. Here's what I found. At the beginning of the month, 63 were still waiting to be tested at the Highway Patrol crime labs. I got responses from four different police departments and found that nearly 800 completed rape kits were still sitting in evidence rooms. The Columbia Police Department told me it couldn't give me an accurate count. The two hospitals I heard back from tell me they didn't have any. It's a starting place to know exactly how many are we talking about and what are different factors that are causing um, problems in the testing. Last year, the Highway Patrol tested 666 rape kits. Yeah. I asked Captain John Hotz if the agency has enough manpower to keep up so, with all the kits uh, sent for testing. We look at what what the, the personnel we have, the budgets that we are allocated, and we use those personnel to, you know, come up with the best system to analyze the evidence as quickly as possible. Several bills have been filed this year in hopes to create some statewide regulations. Part of a bill Senator Caleb Rowden has filed would give law enforcement two weeks to pick up a completed rape kit at the hospital and then another two weeks to submit it to the crime lab for testing. So I think we all recognize now that uh, we haven't handled this, the state uh, as a whole has not handled this situation exactly the right way. Others would establish an electronic monitoring system so victims, hospitals and law enforcement could know where the kit was in the testing process. It's too important for these men or women to have their day in court. And to know that there's, there's a system in place that's keeping it safe and keeping it, you know, giving me updates as I need them, it, it would have been so helpful. 
An electronic monitoring system for rape kits would be costly, though. The Attorney General's office estimates anywhere up to $2 million to get it started and then another $400,000 a year just to keep it going. Advocates tell me they would be happy with establishing some statewide regulations first before moving on to the tracking system. The Attorney General tells ABC 17 News there's no timeline on when his office hopes to complete the audit. He says it should be soon.